Okay, everybody. We're gonna show you our two two favorite macropods. So, all right. So the much darker one, who's a little bit more. Oh no, hold on, buddy. The darker one there, that is a Wally. He is a red-backed or a Bennett's Wallaby. You can tell that he's a male because all that kind of reddish, rusty red-colored fur on the back of his shoulders, neck, and head. And for most of his back, to be fair, is that color. And he's happy right now because it is time to feed our kangaroo and our wallaby. So they're not just eating anything. This is not dog food. This is Missouri kangaroo and wallaby diet. And that is what these guys eat. Now they do, to be fair, they do graze on pretty much everything in the backyard. They love to graze on the grasses and just about anything else that's growing back here. If you have flowering plants or, you know, pretty ornamental flowers or an, even a garden of any type, they will try to eat it. Wally is right now trying to show how dominant he is, even though he is a different species. Wally, stop it. Stop it. And then, of course, the light gray one is Sydney. Sydney is a red kangaroo. She's not very red because she's a girl. Girl red kangaroos are quite, quite, uh, quite gray. She's kind of a bluish gray color as she gets older. They're hungry. They want some of this, even though they eat stuff all day long. Hey, guys. You want to eat out here instead of in your house? Since the tortoise is in your house. There you go. So Sydney is about 10 to 11 months old, probably closer to 10. And it's very important that kangaroos get kangaroo food like this. Not only does it have the right minerals and nutrients that they need, but they also have, both kangaroos and wallabies have very large grinding teeth in the back of their mouth. And those teeth kind of constantly uh, replenish themselves just like a rodent's teeth would. And if you don't do that, if they don't have the right kind of food to eat, uh, their teeth keep growing and they kind of smash into each other and it can actually cause a very serious life-threatening condition called lumpy jaw, which does not sound very scary, but for them it's it's not good. It's it's very it's very bad for them to get. So as long as they have the right kind of food to eat, it helps take care of it. And also they do love it. Now even though he is a wallaby and she is a kangaroo, they are they are related to each other. They're in the same genus, Macropus. Although they, they are quite a bit different. If you look at one big thing is her feet. She does have three toes. Although the two on two on the outside are quite small, the one in the middle there is quite large. Or if you look at his foot, he has a very tiny inside toe. You can barely see it. It's right there. It's for those the, that toe is used for kind of scratching and grooming their fur. And then his middle toe right there and the outside toe are quite large. Now these animals do live in different habitats in Australia. Uh, the red kangaroo is more of the, lives in the dry desert, arid scrubland habitat, and the wallaby here, they're more commonly found in the wetter forests. And since he does like to climb on things, he needs a larger foot with larger toes to help him climb up stuff, which does include uh, tables, chairs, anything outside. He tends to knock a lot of things over, whereas she just kind of hops around the yard. Isn't that right, buddy? Yeah. All right, well, this was getting a chance to see Wally and Sydney having some lunch.